quinto y último combate de la noche. División más de 91 kilogramos. Árbitro Tony Germain de Canadá. En la esquina de Rusia, Magomed Omarov. So the towering figure of Magomed Omarov just making his way into the stadium half light. Six foot five inches tall. The European Championship gold medalist from 2011. That tournament in Ankara in Turkey. 2012 Olympic gold medal, 2012 Olympic boxer as well. Lost at the quarter-final stage to the eventual bronze medalist, Magomed Rizal Medjidov. Received credentials in World Series Boxing. One fight so far in Season 4, that was in Week 10 against... Gerardo Miguel Vispal. En la esquina de Domadores de Cuba, José Ángel Larduez. So Jose Angel Lade is the Cuban super heavyweight representative. The 2008 World Youth Championship gold medalist. Down at 81 kilograms, competing up at super heavyweight now. Hugely experienced individual. Two times the senior national champion, including the reigning champion a senior heavyweight, took a youth title in 2008, a junior title in 2006, and here you see his World Series boxing credentials. One win, one loss. División más de 91 man kilogramos. Man 17. En la esquina de Rusia, Magomed Omaro. En la esquina de Domadores de Cuba. José Ángel Lardué. So you see the advantage in height that Amarov enjoys over Lardué. This is the only chance for Russia to leave Havana with a win. Currently trailing 4-0 after four completed bouts as we await the opening belt in the super heavyweight division. So the opening bell sounds then to begin the first of a scheduled five three-minute rounds. 91 kilograms plus super heavyweight action between Magomed Amarov and Jose Angel Lade. All action start to this contest. Lade taking the fight to Amarov, but Amarov getting through with some heavy leather of his own in this battle of 2012 Olympians. So some big shots being landed by fighters here now really setting their stall out trying to impose each other and what we're seeing is that height advantage of the russian boxing team fighter will it play a part in this well i don't think so if lade has got anything to say lade replacing scheduled fighter yoandi tuarek here in this super heavy division and i kind of think that tonight the fight that will have the decisive end will be this one. Some big shots here as the big boys come out to play. Both men made the quarterfinals in the Olympic tournament at London 2012. Lade was competing down at 91 kilograms heavyweight during that tournament, lost to the eventual silver medalist Clemente Russo. It was as we've pointed out, Amarov lost to the marauding figure that is Magomed Rizal Medjidov. Came away with a bronze in that tournament. Did Medjidov. But he is the reigning two-time defending Aiba World Championship Boxing gold medal. Oh, good left hook from Lade. That got the attention of Omarov, and Omarov keen to walk his man down and just initiate a clinch. Best punch of the round so far, as we've just passed the halfway stage of this opening round. Both men swinging for the fences. And a single knockout punch from one of these super heavyweights could well terminate this contest early. Thudding punches going in from both boxers. So with a minute just left in this round, we're seeing Lade has got the leverage, scathing body shot to Omarov. And Lade 
in a very, very commanding position here. He's hurt the Russian a couple of times, and we've seen a flash of real hench from the Cuban. Could this be the fight that has the stoppage in it? So approaching the final 30 seconds of this opening round. Not the boxing we saw from De La Cruz in a light heavyweight contest, but plenty of hard punches being thrown by both of these boxers. Omarov, the taller man, has taken some heavy shots to both head and body, but has had some success of his own. So he gets through with a snaking right hand to the midsection of Omarov as he was just... Lade turning on the pressure when oh. he gets the opportunity. That's the right hand that could cause the upset here tonight. Thunderous shot right on the bell from Lade has put this man on the canvas. So he goes back to his corner, looking a little bit out of breath, but what an exchange towards the closing bell. And it was Lade who came away with the better of it, sending Amar off toppling to the canvas, and he brings the Cuban crowd to their feet. So here's the action. Look at that big left hook to the temple, works downstairs, comes back up again after dropping the hands of the Russian, and uh, Lade looking to end this with an early shower here tonight and the Russian in all kinds of trouble towards the end of that round. Will he have the energy to sustain that pressure coming through into the second? They're both hitting big here tonight. So into the second round we go. Amarov has taken a trip to the canvas. Right on the bell of the second round and Lade has begun the second round in aggressive fashion once again. Amarov Initiates the clinch. And the niceties of the jab and of setting your man up, really being disregarded here. And both men planting their feet in the canvas and looking to land a knockout blow. Well, it's the big right hand that Lade's got at his disposal here. Brings it downstairs, brings it up, and putting the Russian under so much pressure in the opening of this round. Omarov really finding it difficult to keep Lade out here, should be using his range, should be working off a left hand there to cause some space between the two, but he's going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Lade, and that might not be the best thing. Crowd on their feet here, because the action really is thick and fast. Well, we mentioned that this is the second contest in World Series boxing for Amarov. It's actually a debut in the sense that his opening contest, what was scheduled to be his opening contest in week 10, was turned into a walkover. As Gerardo Miguel Biscal, the Puerto Rican who represents the Mexican team, wasn't able to enter into the ring. So what a, an introduction to the five-round World Series boxing action this has been. Remember, he won't have been beyond the three-round Aiba boxing distance before. We're in the halfway stage of the second round, and because of the heavy shots that are being landed by Gerardo, look at that hellacious left hook that Lade let go. Lade lands with a clipping right hook on the inside. And Amarov looking just a little bit ragged and the worse for wear, approaching the final minute of this second round. Hard right hand to the body from Lade, and another one on the belt line once again. Amarov coming forward, but the aggression and intent has just been reduced in his work, less snap in his punches than those being thrown from Lade. Well, it's on the inside that Lade's really causing problems here, and Amarov hasn't read this right at all. He's allowing Lade to come inside that range and land shots, and I don't think Omarov is going to be able to take too much more of this. Approaching the final 30 seconds, and really, we're only in the second round, and this contest already attritional because Lade came out blazing. Stamping his intent on the contest right from the opening bell. He put Amarov on the floor at the end of the first round. And has begun this second round in similar vein and is maintaining it all the way through with around 20 seconds to go before the bell for round number two. Cuffing shot around the back of the head. That was as much forearm and glove. The crowd thought it was a knockdown. The referee says otherwise. So Amarov with a second trip to the canvas, but the Russian looking ragged now, fighting on heart, 
don't know whether he's fighting on fumes at this point, but both men looking fatigued as they make their way back to the corners at the conclusion of another action-packed second round. Marov wins some success of his own, but then Lade, impossible to resist, just continuing to swing away. Landing with the inside of the glove, landing with the forearm, letting the shots fall where they may. But his aggressive intent is undeniable. Amarov showing plenty of fighting spirit as well. And that, a thunderous left hook, excuse me, a thunderous right hook behind the left hand of Amarov. So Lade takes the second round. Now, I'm not quite sure how they've arrived at that score, because how can it be tied up when Amarov was on the floor in the opening round? But... The official scorecard says 19 points apiece, perhaps that was an error. So as we move into the third round, there is still everything to fight for, despite Lade taking the second round in unanimous fashion and having put his man on the floor in the opening round. Well, from what we've seen so far, I suspect this fight will not go to judges' scorecards. Lade has really heavy hands and he's able to bring Omarov into range to be able to land them. He's headhunting in this third round. He puts the pressure on. Omarov struggling now, goes to the clinch. Lade coming into this third with real intent and maybe looking to finish this very, very early. So Omarov, the national championship gold medalist from 2012. Heavy shots, and Lade working the technique of hitting low to bring the hands down of Omarov. The clinch, I suspect, is very indicative of where Omarov is in the giant scheme of things here. Rushing to hold very, very quickly. Starting to make headway in round three in terms of his ability to create the space and work at distance. But just look at Lade hitting at will, and those are very, very heavy hands. So we approach the halfway stage of this third round. Good work to the body from Lade, digging that right hand just above the belt line, and Amaro's trunks have come very low indeed. Often see the old pro's truck trick of boxers letting the protective cup right up to somewhere around the bottom of the pecs, but Amarov got through with a good right hand of his own, but Lade continues to maraud his way forwards and just winging swift shots. Two right hands, two right hands to the body, bringing it upstairs as well. But Amarov standing, trading, coming back with his own offense. All action stuff here in the third round, deep into the third round. So Lade trying to bamboozle and befuddle Amarov by circling the hands. Amarov remaining focused on the task at hand. Never mind boxing ability, this one could well come down to fitness levels, stoutness of chin and desire. As Russia seeking their first win of the night, Cuba looking for the whitewash. Nice evasive movement from Lade, came back with a right hand of his own, but didn't manage to connect on that shot. As we're inside the final 20 seconds of this third round. Well, I said earlier on, in previous bouts it's not how you start it's how you finish and Omarov is still there despite the intention of Lade and Lade might well be showing signs of fatigue himself has Omarov ridden the storm well there's the bell for the third so he looks to fight another round tail of the tape just shows us the scathing body shots Lade dropping the hands of Omarov and then using the opportunity to land his own and come through the guard however Omarov survives the round here and uh, that's going to be crucial going into the fourth because I think at this stage Lade's hit him with everything he's got 10-9 10-9 10-9 judge A B and C in favor of the Cuban so, not a lot to prove left after that third round. Going into the fourth, I 
think Lade wants a spectacular end here. And uh, Omarov going to deny him that, I would suspect. Into the fourth round we go. Omarov comes out with a stiff right hand to begin the contest. Lade landing with an uppercut at close quarters. And this really is a hard-hitting slugfest in the super heavyweight division. Omarov, after appearing rather shell-shocked in the early stages of this contest, has got his way back into it, despite having dropped rounds two and three in unanimous fashion for the judges after taking a trip to the canvas in round number one, which somehow the judges conspired to score in favor of the Russian. But still, as keenly contested as com and competitive as you would expect between these two great boxing nations, always a classic rivalry, but it's Cuba, who are very much on top tonight, Russia. Boxing for individual pride in Omarov and national pride as well. The result of the match has gone, but Omarov would love to get his World's Boxing Series career off to a winning start. But in front of him, he has got a marauding figure of Jose Lade. Almost in a rock and a hard place as a boxer because he's got Toyrak, the Cuban super heavyweight, who is perhaps the number one in Aiba boxing and perhaps ahead of him in World Series boxing as well, as he got through with a hard right hand. And then beneath him, you've got the Elis Eris Landy Savon. So where Lade fits into the Cuban scheme of things is open to question. Putting his case forward to be the Cuban number one here tonight with a spirited display against Magomed Amarov. Amarov still firing shots of his own, but less busy in this fourth round. And now clinch is becoming an increasing feature of the contest with a minute to go in round number four. Well, Amarov made some headway here with the tiring Lade. Lade, not as crisp, not as enthusiastic, although from my lips to his ears, comes forward and puts Amarov under pressure. I think the problem that Lade's got here is the fact that Amarov just won't go away. And in fact, Get stronger as this bout goes on. Good right hand goes straight through the guard, rocks the head back of Amarov. But more hugging now than slugging. Half a minute left. And almost a Superman punch there from Lade. Desperate to close the distance and get in and have impact. But those heavy hands that I spoke about early in the round seem to have disappeared. And uh, this could be Amarov's opportunity as a tiring Lade will come out for the fifth. And the 10 second clap of sounds here in round number four, but even though he does appear fatigued and he's looked that way in several rounds, what he produces are punches and clusters like that. So very, very spirited performer indeed is Jose Lade, the reigning champion in the super heavyweight division from 2013. Amarov hasn't been able to make his advantage in height and reach tell, but he's showing an abundance of heart here in this contest tonight. Standing, taking shots, but landing his own as well, and has proved impossible to discourage and dis discourage. But look at how Lade is pouring his way forwards. But Amarov getting through with shots of his own, but more success coming from the gloves of Lade, more accuracy as well. But as with his four previous Russian teammates, the fighting spirit of the Russian team is to be commended. Indeed, one judge seeing the fifth, fourth round in favor of Amarov. So he's tied it up for one judge, but trailing by two rounds for judges A and B, going in to the fifth and final round. So still everything to fight for in this super heavyweight bout. Into the fifth and final round we go. Magomed Amarov representing Russia, operating out of the South Pole stance, the taller of the two boxes in the ring, <laughs> against the hard swinging Fast punching, Jose Lade of Cuba. The boxing in this contest hasn't been as aesthetically pleasing as what we've seen in previous bouts, but make no mistake about the intensity and the aggressive intent being demonstrated by both boxers. Amarov gets through with a good right hand and just walks Lade back to the ropes. The work from Lade now just getting a little bit sloppy. The effort, the intention isn't there. And Amarov might well take advantage of that 
because uh, Lade has to expose himself coming in and we're seeing good work here from Omarov in this fifth and final round and Lade well might just find himself exposed so the status of the bout at the moment as we approach the halfway stage one judge has it tied up the other two judges see Lade in front by two so everything to box for in this fifth and final round both boxers will be aware of the state of the bout as they enter the fifth round good three punch combination snakes through the gloves of Amara from Lade but Lade looking at an increasingly fatigued fighter deep into round number five Amara not looking too fresh himself but he appears to be fresher out of the two men on their feet at the moment indeed Amara up on his toes during that previous separation from the ref got through the power driving left and walks Amara and walks Lade back to the ropes so it could well come down to this final minute to determine the outcome of this bout now it's Lade who is keen to hold on just allowing the seconds to elapse fast three punch combination from Amara nudging shot on the inside in return from Lade both boxers incredibly tired but you have the sense that they're aware that the outcome of this bout could well be determined in these closing stages with the intensity tailing off here in the last seconds the clock is the enemy for both fighters and Lade looks a spent force interestingly enough Omaro still has a freshness about his work, having taken what was incredible punishment from the Cuban throughout the previous four rounds. Well, now Lade focusing up, but too much, too little, too late. So, Cuban corner think they have done enough. Remember, Lade led for two of the three judges by two rounds one judge had it all tied after four rounds of boxing but he exerted so much energy in the opening rounds of this contest he was weary as the contest progressed but continued to punch right until the final bell as did Amarov spirited super heavyweight contest here in the second leg of the World Series boxing semi-finals Neither boxer really working too much on defense, focusing more on the offense, on the offensive aspect of boxing. But Lade thinks he has done enough. And the towering figure of Amarov never given the room to employ that advantage in height and reach because Lade was on his chest from the outset. And that was good enough to open up a two-round lead after four completed rounds of boxing one judge had it all square so we await the official announcement the question remains will Russia leave Havana with a win or will they be whitewashed as they board the plane back for the long journey Decision home to Moscow combate, here's division, the official announcement más de 91 kilogramos juez 1 48 47 Juez 2, 47, 48. Juez 3, 48, 47. El vencedor por votación dividida de los domadores de Cuba, José Ángel Larue. So Jose Angel Lade wins a split decision victory. The only split decision of the night, it has gone in favor of the home fighter as Amarov produced a spirited rally in the latter portion of that contest, but it wasn't enough to overcome the good start enjoyed by Jose Lade as the Cuba Domadores prevail over Russia by a whitewash scoreline of five bouts to nil here in Havana. That's an 8-2 aggregate victory. And it means that the Domadores, in their first season of World Series boxing action, have booked their place in the final. They're the ones who will contest the ultimate prize 
in World Series boxing action in their Estimados first aficionados. season of competition, and that is how they have secured their passage Estimados courtesy of a comprehensive 5-0 whitewash win over their great rivals, Russia. Domadores de Cuba, cinco. Russia, Russia deserves immense credit cero. for the manner in which they competed. Con este they were outboxed in many of the bouts, but the celebrations en el belong to Cuba. De la and serie that flag, de boxeo. so synonymous with success in the boxing eso, ring, vamos a is waved proudly through the Havana night, here, Cuba, Havana night pues, air here in Cuba. A este equipo que acaba de the Cuba en la Serie Mundial de Boxeo will contest y the ya son four final finalistas in World Series Boxing. Wonderful performance from one of the best Aiba boxing nations on the planet. And how well they have acquitted themselves in this, their opening season in World Series Boxing action. The logo that the Domadores have on their shorts and that you see there on the graphic as we have reinforced the 5-0 scoreline is of the legendary Teofilio Stevenson, the three-time Olympic champion who inspired so much greatness in the Cuban boxing tradition. And I'm sure he'll be smiling down. And his spirit has been well represented Gracias throughout the Domadores all season long. Y estén al tanto de lo que They take their place in the final, courtesy of a 5-0 whitewash win on the night and an 8-2 win on aggregate. Con los Domadores de Cuba en busca de la corona. Hasta entonces, buenas noches. Quieren conquistar una medalla Hoy la bandera de la estrella solitaria So the celebrations continue up in the boxing ring Coaching staff Trainers, boxers, associates All enjoy this moment beneath the ring lights now As the Cuban flag is waved in celebration They know that their team has secured their place in the season four final of World Series Boxing. And given the manner which they have negotiated the regular season and the playoffs, who would bet against them? These are the ways you can get involved. Follow World Series Boxing through all the social media outlets. Promises to be quite a final. Huber have booked their place, so who will join them? as everybody takes a trip to the canvas. And there is Eris Landis Savon wearing spectacles, but once he steps into the ring, they had to wait nothing wrong with his eyesight whatsoever. Carries that famous family name, the nephew of the legendary Felix Savon. One of the formidable force of boxers that represent the Domadores in World Series boxing action. And they have proved a handful. Unbeatable at home, only one loss all season. Here stays our De La Cruz, brilliant tonight. Brilliant all season long. The Aiba double world champion fully recovered from that injury he sustained at a restaurant in Camagüey, his home province. And here you see the next generation of Cuban fighters. 